ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय इन चैप्टर टेन कृष्ण इंस्ट्रक्स आर जूना इन इवन मोर कॉन्फिडेंशियल नॉलेज अबाउट हिज ऑपुलेंसेज एंड हिज वर्क Previously beginning with the 7th chapter the lord has already explained his different energies and how they are acting now in the 10th chapter krishna explains his specific opulences which are to be discovered in this material world to arjuna in the previous 9th chapter krishna has clearly explained his different energies in order to establish devotion with firm conviction and again in this 10th chapter krishna tells arjuna about his various manifestations and opulences within the material world so tap chapter 10 has 42 verses which prabhupad entitles the opulence of the absolute so brahman paramatma and bhagavan all have opulences but the full display of opulence is in bhagavan so the first 7 verses i entitled knowledge that is better than before prabhupad comments the word bhagavan is explained by parashara muni the father of shrila vyasadev ऐश्वर्य सम्यस्यमग्रस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्यस्
नशयामस्तो ज्ञान दीप्तेन बास्वथ So in these four nutshell verses Krishna says that he is the source of all spiritual and material worlds everything emanates from Krishna those who are wise perfectly know this and therefore they engage in Krishna's devotional service in one or up to nine different ways and they worship Krishna with all their hearts the thoughts of such pure devotees of krishna dwell only in krishna the lives of these pure devotees are fully devoted to serving krishna and these pure devotees derive great satisfaction and bliss from always enlightening one another and conversing about krishna So I would like to add here is another self test how much you like to discuss krishna with others that is another indication how you have achieved a level of advancement to those pure devotees who are constantly devoted to serving krishna with love krishna gives the understanding by which they can come to krishna so that was alluded to previously in the previous section i told you at that time that prabhupad was referring to something in this chapter so this is it krishna in the heart will guide the devotee and thus to show pure devotees special mercy krishna dwelling in their hearts destroys with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance or as lord chaitanya says in his first shikshastakam that by cleansing the mirror of the heart by chanting the hare krishna maha mantra that is the life and soul of all transcendental knowledge so if you want krishna dwelling in your heart to destroy the darkness of ignorance pray to him chant his name incessantly hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare now here's another self test I just had this experience one week ago. I was driving my wife in her car and when I turned the corner I got blinded by the sun and so I started to drift over and my wife was freaking out. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna. And we just missed a truck cuz luckily by her chanting I was able to steer the car away from the oncoming truck so yes that is the test when danger comes what comes out of your mouth if the mouth if out of your mouth at the time of danger hare krishna comes now you know you have made advancement if some other word comes out <laughs> then you know you made no advancement but at these crucial times krishna's name should come out prabhupad continues the pure devotee does not have to worry about material necessities of life he or she need not be so anxious because when one removes the darkness from one's heart everything is provided automatically by the supreme lord who is pleased by the loving devotional service of the devotee now listen prabhupad now says this is the essence of the teachings of bhagavad gita this is why i select these summaries within gita prabhupad is doing all the homework for you professor prabhupad is giving you the answers 
Here it is. The essence of pure of Bhagavad Gita. The pure devotee does not have to worry, does not have to be anxious. You simply have to please Krishna by devotional service. That's it. Prabhupada continues. By studying Bhagavad Gita, one can become a soul completely surrendered to the Supreme Lord and engage in pure devotional service. So here is the whole point of studying Bhagavad Gita. To come to that stage, the conclusion, which we will find in chapter 18, to completely surrender. And as the Lord takes charge, one becomes completely free from all kinds of materialistic endeavors. Now, in text numbers 12 to 18, Arjuna accepts Krishna as God and requests to see his opulences. So, after hearing the four nutshell verses of Gita, Arjuna responds by saying, Yes, Krishna, now I accept you as the Supreme. Parang Brahma, you are the Supreme Spiritual Personality. But then Arjuna says, I want to know all about your opulences that can be viewed within the material realm. So verses 19 to 39, Krishna outlines 81 vibhuti yogas. Vibhuti means specific opulences in terms of the material energy that you can view. And finally, the last uh, three verses of this 10th chapter, Krishna gives his own commentary about these vibhutis. Prabhupada now comments, there is a mission that regularly propounds that worship of any demigod will lead one to the supreme personality of Godhead or the supreme goal. So Prabhupada there is referring to a kind of mayavad or impersonal philosophy which devotees reject. And Prabhupada then says, but worship of demigods is thoroughly discouraged here in Bhagavad Gita because even the greatest of the demigods such as Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva represent only part of the opulence of the Supreme Lord. That is why you will find in the Vedas, Krishna is Purna Bhagavan. Yes, there are many different categories of Bhagavan. You will read in the Vedas, sometimes Lord Brahma is referred to as Bhagavan. Lord Shiva is so many times referred to as Shiva Bhagavan. Yes, but as Prabhupada is pointing here, they're not Purna Bhagavan. They are not the complete 100% Bhagavan. That is reserved for Krishna. Even Ram, Narayan, Vishnu, they are not 100% Bhagavan. This we learn from the teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam and confirmed by Lord Chaitanya and repeated and taught by Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada continues, Krishna is the ultimate origin of everyone and no one is greater than Krishna. Krishna is therefore described by the Sanskrit word Asamaudva, which means that no one is superior to Krishna and no one is equal to Krishna. In the Padma Purana, it is said that one who considers the Supreme Lord Krishna in the same category as that of the demigods, even they be Lord Brahma or Lord Shiva, becomes at once a Pashandi, an atheist. But if, however, one thoroughly studies the different descriptions of the opulences and expansions of Krishna's energy, then one can understand without any doubt 
the position of Lord Sri Krishna as the Supreme. And one can thus fix his or her mind in the worship of Krishna without deviation. The Lord is known as Vasudeva, all-pervading by the expansion of his partial representation, Paramatma, the super soul, who enters into everything that be. Pure devotees therefore concentrate their minds in Krishna consciousness in full devotional service and therefore they are always situated in the transcendental position. And that will be explained at the end of chapter 14, by the way. Devotional service and worship of Krishna are very clearly indicated in this 10th chapter in verses 8 through 11. That is the way of pure devotional service. How one can attain the highest devotional perfection of association with the Supreme Personality of Godhead has been thoroughly explained in this chapter. The great Acharya Srila Baladev Vijabhushana, who is a great Acharya in disciplic succession from Krishna, concludes his commentary on this 10th chapter by saying that from Lord Krishna's potent energy, even the powerful sun gets its power. By the way, that is also confirmed in the Brahma Sanghita. And by Krishna's partial expansion, the whole world is maintained. Therefore, Lord Sri Krishna is worshipable. And so Krishna concludes the 10th chapter by saying, Uttava bahunaitena kingyatena tabarjuna vishtabhyaham idam kritsnam ekangshenas to jagat. So in this chapter, when Krishna explained the 81 vibhutis, here is Krishna's own personal final commentary on this chapter. What does he say? Oh, my dear Arjuna, what need is there for all this detailed knowledge? Just understand that with a single fragment of myself as Paramatma, I pervade and support this entire universe. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya The 11th chapter reveals Krishna as the cause of all causes Sarva Karana, Karanam. Krishna is even the cause of the Mahavishnu from whom all the material universes emanate. However, Krishna is not an incarnation. No, no, no. Krishna is the source of all incarnations as confirmed in the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Krishna stu Bhagavan Swayam, this line, Krishna stu Bhagavan Swayam, is the singular most important line of all the 18,000 shlokas of Srimad Bhagavatam. So if you memorize this line, you accept it, then you will understand everything. Krishna stu Bhagavan Swayam meaning that there are many many incarnations of avatars lord chaitanya says there are six different categories of avatars lord brahma and lord shiva are included they also included in the list of one of the six kinds of avatars so in the srimad bhagavatam 
Sutta Goswami was explaining these six different kinds of avatars. And then he came up with this line. Krishna stu Bhagavan Swayam. Meaning, yes, I have mentioned so many incarnations, avatars. But understand, Krishna is the source. Krishna is the origin. Everything starts with Krishna. And as we learn from Lord Brahma, Anadi Adir Govinda. Krishna himself has no origin. He himself is the origin. Everything else comes from Krishna, including Balaram, what to speak of all the other incarnations and demigods. It is only Krishna who is the original cause of all causes and he, has, he himself has no cause. Now, as far as Arjuna is concerned, he says that his illusion is now over. This means that Arjuna no longer thinks of Krishna as a mere human being. Now, although Krishna is his friend, he now accepts Krishna as the source of everything. So, this line, his illusion is now over, refers to what we studied in the very first chapter of Bhagavad Gita and the first section of chapter 2 when Arjuna dropped his bow when Arjuna told Krishna that I shall not fight when, uh, when Arjuna told Krishna I am confused I don't know what is my duty so many different emotions were expressed by Arjuna in chapter 1 but the turning point of Bhagavad Gita was in chapter 2 when Arjuna said to Krishna, Shishyaste hung shadi mang twang prapanam. I am now surrendered. I am now your disciple. Kindly instruct me. That is the turning point of Bhagavad Gita. But now, after hearing the four nutshell verses, all of his previous doubts, illusion, hesitancy is gone. Prabhupada continues, Arjuna is very enlightened and is glad that he has such a great friend as Krishna. But now Arjuna is thinking that although he may accept Krishna as the source of everything, Others may not. So in order to establish Krishna's divinity for all, Arjuna is requesting Krishna in this 11th chapter to show his universal form. Actually, if one sees this universal form of Krishna, one becomes frightened, just like Arjuna did. But Krishna is so kind that after showing his universal form, Krishna converts himself again into his four-armed Narayana form and then to his original form in the human uh, category or human form, although it is transcendental, it is not immaterial, but a two-handed human-like form. Arjuna agrees to what Krishna has several times said. Krishna is speaking to Arjuna just for his benefit. So Arjuna acknowledges that all this is happening to him by Krishna's grace. Arjuna is now convinced that Krishna is the cause of all causes and is present in everyone's heart as super soul. So chapter 11 is a very uh, large chapter. It's one of the third largest chapters. Chapter 2, chapter 11, and chapter 18 are the longest uh, chapters in Bhagavad Gita. Chapters 12 and uh, chapter 15 are the shortest. So chapter 11 has 55 verses. Prabhupada entitles it 
the vision of the universal form. Verses 1 through 4, Arjuna asks to see the universal form. Uh, verses 5 through 8, Krishna agrees to display the universal form because actually there is no universal form. Sri Nam Radha and I have discussed this and analyzed this uh, quite extensively in a most recent email exchange. So yes, the universal form is a display. There is actually no universal form because the universal form is a material conception for those who cannot accept the personal form of Krishna. So Krishna displayed a universal form twice to Mother Yashoda when Yashoda looked in the mouth of Krishna on two different occasions. Mother Yashoda saw the whole cosmic manifestation within the mouth of Krishna. And the second time, she saw the whole cosmic manifestation and herself and Krishna in Krishna's mouth. Another display of the universal form was when Krishna went to Hastinapur to present a peace proposal to the Kauravas and Duryodhan tried to capture Krishna, tried to bind Krishna, but Krishna displayed a universal form and for the only time in Dhritarashtra's life he was able to see and what did he see? This gigantic universal form of Krishna. After that, again, he returned blind. And yet another universal form was displayed by Vamanadev when he was granted three steps by uh, Bali Maharaj. And with two steps, Vamanadev covered the whole cosmic manifestation up and down and he was expanding to universal proportions. So these are the different, of course, here in this Bhagav on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, Krishna reveals a special universal form, which he says to Arjuna. This universal form no one else has ever seen. It's a special. So in chapter, uh, verses 9 through 14, after, because Krishna says, but you cannot see this display unless I give you access. Just like to enter this Zoom meeting, you have to have the access code. <coughs> or to enter some Wi-Fi, you have to have the password. So in the same way, to see this display, Krishna's universal form, Krishna has to give you the eyes with which to see. So in verses 15 through 31, and in verses 9 through 14, Arjuna describes through the words of Sanjaya, because Sanjaya is explaining everything to Dhritarashtra, away from the battlefield. So we get a description by Arjuna through Sanjaya of what Krishna is displaying. Then in verses 35 through 46, Arjuna offers prayers to the universal form. And when uh, Krishna was displaying the universal form, Arjuna at some point very intelligently says, Who are you? What is your mission? <coughs> and Krishna as the universal form responds by saying, I am time. I'm the eternal time element. And what does time do? The universal form says, Time destroys everything. And Arjuna also saw in this special universal form that Krishna was presenting, 
Arjuna could see all the Kauravas entering the mouths of the blazing universal form. So Arjuna got a glimpse and so then the universal form told Arjuna, I want you to be my instrument. These Kauravas are already dead by my plan. They're all going to die by my plan. But Arjuna, I want you to be my instrument. Here are my little cartels. The cartels play according to my direction. So Krishna told Arjuna, I want you to be my instrument. Nimatta matra babasabhya sachin. You be my instrument and I want you to take the credit. That's how great and cool Krishna is. Krishna enjoys better when his devotee gets the credit for what Krishna actually does. That's Krishna. He's cool. So Arjuna offers prayers to the universal form. And after some time, Arjuna says, I've had enough. I've had enough. Krishna, please return. I want to see your four-armed form. And then I want to see you in your original two-handed form. So Krishna does that. He removes the display, the magic show and appears to Arjuna as Narayan Vishnu and then returns to his original two-handed form. And the final uh, four verses of this chapter is all about the exclusivity of Krishna. Prabhupada now writes, Anyone who wants to approach the Supreme of all personalities of Godhead, which I previously emphasized, on the Krishna Loka planet in the spiritual sky and be intimately connected with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, must take this formula as stated by the Supreme Lord Himself in the final verse of this chapter. Mat Karmakrin Mat Paramo Madhvakta Sangha Varjita Nirvaira Sarva Bhuteshu Yah Samam Eti Pandava My dear Arjuna, one who engages in my pure devotional service, free from the contaminations of fruitive activities and free from mental speculation, who works for me, who makes me the supreme goal of life and who is friendly to every living being certainly comes to me. And once again, Prabhupada makes a point. Therefore, this verse is considered to be the essence of Bhagavad Gita. So this final verse of chapter 11, mark it down. Prabhupada says is the essence of Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is a book directed to the conditioned souls who are engaged in the material world, struggling with the purpose of lording it over material nature, but who do not know of the real spiritual life. The Bhagavad Gita is meant to show how one can understand one's own spiritual existence and one's own eternal relationship with the Supreme Spiritual Personality of Krishna and to teach one how to go back home, back to Godhead. So, me personally, I find this very enlivening that I, you, everyone, has an individual, unique, eternal relationship with Krishna. And by chanting, by rendering devotional service, that eternal, individual, unique relationship is gradually revealed. That is why I chant 
That is why I preach, because I seriously, wholeheartedly want to know my eternal, unique relationship with Krishna. And I hope you do too. Now here is the verse which completely, clearly explains the process by which one can attain success in one's spiritual activity known as devotional service. The 11th chapter in summary describes the universal form of Krishna which is a temporary manifestation and the form of eternal time which devours everything and even the form of Vishnu forehanded which has all been exhibited by Krishna. Thus, Krishna is the origin of all these manifestations. It is not that Krishna is a manifestation of the original Vishvarupa or universal form. No. And Krishna is not a manifestation of Vishnu. No. That's why I have a joke. I sometimes say that many people are what I call spiritually dyslexic. A dyslexic person puts everything backwards. So this is what Prabhupada is referring. Some people say, oh, Krishna is a manifestation of this Vishvarupa. Or Krishna is the manifestation of Vishnu Narayan. Uh-uh. Not according to Bhagavad Gita, not according to Srimad Bhagavatam, not according to Lord Brahma, not according to Lord Shiva, not according to Lord Chaitanya, and not according to Srila Prabhupada. No. Krishna is the origin. Krishna is the supreme. As Prabhupada writes here, Krishna is the origin of all forms. There are hundreds. There are thousands of Vishnu forms. But for a devotee, no form of Krishna is as important as the original form, two-handed Syama Sundara. For in the Brahma Sanghita, it is stated, Premanjana Churita Bhakti Vilochanena Santaksa Daiva Hridayeshu Vailokayanti Yang Syama Sundara Machintya Guna Swarupam Govindam Adi Purushang Tamahang Bajami Govindam Adi Purushang Tamahang Bajami Govindam Adi Purusham Tamahang Bajami One should understand that those who are attached to the Syama Sundara form of Krishna in love and devotion can see Krishna always within their heart of hearts and they cannot see anything else. One should understand therefore that the purport of this 11th chapter is that the form of Krishna is essential and supreme. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. This mantra that I chanted so many times, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya is called the 12 syllable mantra and it is very powerful. It was chanted by Prahlad Maharaj, it was chanted by Chitraketu, and anyone who chants this mantra sincerely will get all kinds of spiritual realization. Om Namo Bhagavate. Vasudevaya. It is actually the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam. The very first line of all the 18,000 slokas, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 
Prabhupada now writes. We find in this 12th chapter that of the different processes for realization of the absolute truth, bhakti yoga, devotional service, is the highest. So if one at all desires to have the association of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then he or she must take to devotional service. So chapter 12 has 20 verses, as I said. This chapter and chapter 15 are the shortest verses, chapters with only 20 verses. Chapter 12 is called Bhakti Yoga and Prabhupada defines Bhakti as devotional service. Now the chapter begins, very important, this opening seven shlokas of chapter 12 are very important because Arjuna asks a question, an important question, a question that has been asked throughout the ages for millions and millions of years. It is a fundamental transcendental question. Arjuna's question is, my Lord, should I worship you in your personal form or should I worship you as an impersonalist? And Krishna's answer is definitive. Krishna's advice to Arjuna, worship him in his personal form. Prabhupada writes, In the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, the Supreme Lord explained that a living entity is not the material body. The living entity is a spiritual spark. And the absolute truth is the spiritual whole. In the seventh chapter, Krishna spoke of the living entity as being part and parcel of the supreme whole. And this will also be explained by Krishna in chapter 15. Aparayam itastvan yang prakriting vidhi me param. Jiva Bhutang Mahabaho Yayedam Dariate Jagat. So, by this verse in chapter 7, Krishna recommends that one transfer one's attention fully to the whole, as was explained in the first verse of chapter 7. Maya Saktamana Partha. Yogam yunjan madasraya ha Asang shayang samagrang mang Yata gyasya si tachrinu And then again in the 8th chapter it was said that anyone who thinks of Krishna at the time of quitting his or her body is at once transferred to the spiritual sky to the abode of Krishna Antakale chamameva smaran mukva kalevaram yak prayati samadbhavam yati nasyatra sanshayaha. And at the end of the sixth chapter, the Lord clearly said, Yoginam apisarvesham madgitain antar atmana sraddhavan bhajate yoma. Of all yogis, one who always thinks of Krishna within him or herself is considered the most perfect. And that is why Lord Chaitanya says, there are no better yogis, there are no better devotees than the gopis of Braja. Because although the gopis were not elevated brahmanas although the gopis were simple cowherd women although the gopis never went to the guru kula <laughs> they proved themselves to be the greatest of all yogis why because they had so much love for krishna so much attachment for krishna that even in krishna's absence they could not forget him and of all the gopis the gopi who is the best at this art 
of always remembering Krishna and never forgetting Krishna is Srimati Radharani. She is the topmost of all meditators of Krishna. Because as Radharani herself admitted, even if I try to forget Krishna, I can't. That is how much love and affection Radharani and all of her gopi expansions have for Krishna. Sometimes thinking and remembering Krishna becomes painful for them and they feel like, I'm so tired. I don't want to think of this Krishna anymore. Too bad. Krishna has captured their hearts and even if they want to, they cannot forget. So in practically every chapter, the conclusion of Bhagavad Gita has been that one should be attached to the personal form of Krishna, for that is the highest spiritual realization. In the next section, verses 8 through 12, we have what is called divisions of faith. In summary, to reach the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the highest goal, there are two processes. One process is by gradual development and the other process is direct. Devotional service in nine ways in Krishna consciousness is the direct method and the other methods involve renouncing the fruits of one's activities. Then, one can come to the stage of knowledge, then to the stage of meditation, then to the stage of understanding the Supersoul, and then to the stage of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One may take either the step-by-step -step process or the direct path. After all, the direct path is not possible for everyone. Therefore, the indirect process can also be good. However, it is to be understood that the indirect process is not recommended for Arjuna because Arjuna is already at the stage of loving devotional service to the Supreme Lord. So rather, the indirect process is for others who are not at this stage. So for them, the gradual process of renunciation, knowledge, meditation, and realization of the Supersoul and Brahman should be followed. But as far as Bhagavad Gita is concerned, it is the direct method that is stressed. Everyone is advised to take to the direct method and surrender unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. And by the way, in Kali Yuga, different from the other Yugas, Satya, Treta and Dwarapa, Kali Yuga is special because taking the direct method has been made easy. It could not be made any easier. Lord Chaitanya came 500 years ago and gave us the simplest, easiest process of the direct method. Hear and chant about Krishna, centered around the holy name. Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama Iba Kivalam, Klau Nastyeva Nastyeva, Nastyeva Gatir Anyata Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So the chapter ends with eight verses which I entitle description of the purest devotee and Prabhupada wraps up this 12th chapter as follows 
in this 12th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, from verse 2 through the end, the Supreme Lord has explained the process of transcendental service for approaching Him. Such processes are very dear to the Lord and Krishna accepts a person engaged in them. So the question of who is better, one who is engaged in the path of impersonal Brahman or one who is engaged in the direct path in the personal service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead was raised by Arjuna and the Lord replied to him so explicitly that there is no doubt that devotional service of nine kinds to the personality of Godhead is the best of all processes of spiritual realization. Krishna said, Maya Vesya Mano Yemam Nitya Yukta Upasate Sraddhaya Paryo Petas Tame Yukta Tama Mataha. So there Krishna told Arjuna, You should think of me in my personal form with great faith and worship me. Always think of me. But then Krishna said, Klesho adikataras te sham, of yakta sakta chetasam, of yakta higatir dhukam, de hovad beer of apyate. After telling Arjuna that the direct process of devotional activities, if you do not take that, if you instead choose the impersonal path, klesha, difficulty, trouble, painstaking. Yes, the impersonal process is not easy like the personal process. It is very difficult. Prabhupada continues. In other words, in this 12th chapter, it is decided that through good association, one develops attachment for pure devotional service and thereby accepts a bona fide spiritual master and from him begins to hear and chant and observe the regulative principles of devotional service with faith, attachment and devotion and thus becomes engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. This path is recommended in this 12th chapter and therefore there is no doubt that devotional service, bhakti yoga, is the only absolute path for self-realization for the attainment of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The impersonal conception of the Supreme Absolute Truth as described in this 12th chapter is recommended only up to the time one surrenders him or herself for self-realization. In other words, as long as one does not have the chance to associate with a pure devotee, the impersonal conception may be beneficial. In the impersonal conception of the Absolute Truth, one works without fruitive result, one meditates, and one cultivates knowledge to understand spirit and matter. This is necessary as long as one is not in the association of a pure devotee. Fortunately, if one develops directly a desire to engage in Krishna consciousness in pure devotional service, then he or she does not need to undergo step-by-step -step improvements in spiritual realization as in my case because I came in contact with Srila Prabhupada because I saw him because I heard him because I continue to read his books because I incessantly hear and chant I am already directly engaged 
I am con be considered fortunate. And you too. You too can be considered fortunate. You have your teacher, Sri Nam Radha. She is also a pure devotee of Krishna. For she is only giving you what Guru and Krishna are teaching. You stay in her association and you will be blessed by Krishna. Prabhupada finishes up. Devotional service as described in the middle six chapters of Bhagavad Gita is more congenial. One need not bother about materials to keep body and soul together because by the grace of the Lord everything is carried out automatically. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama Rama Rama, Hare Hare